Well, just to give you a little history of Mr. Walker to begin with, he was here in Naples when there were fewer than 100 people in our community. And he was actually the first baby born on Marco Island. And then the next year after that, they moved to Naples. And a year after that, my father was born, RL was born here in Naples. Now at that time, there was only 125 people in Naples. So our community was very, very small when it initially existed. And his life was a result of, of that smallness and that strong sense of community when everybody knew each other, everybody looked out for each other. So he'd go with his dad mullet fishing every uh, November. That was their big living, big halls they called it. Initially the walkers were very poor and they literally lived hand to mouth. They fished for their supper in the Gulf of Mexico. In fact, he would actually tell his teacher in his very small classroom at um, Naples High School that he would need to leave when it was mullet fishing time. Lorenzo, he had to help his dad. Well, she, Miss Leela was a wonderful person. She always helped him catch up when he got back from fishing in January. And he told that story so many times, how much he really loved that lady. She was one of the best teachers he ever had. Of course, Lorenzo was very smart in school and was valedictorian of everything he ever did. And of course, he was valedictorian of his class of, of five people that graduated from high school. So one day when he and his brother and his father, Forrest, were fishing at the Gulf of Mexico, his dad looked over at Lorenzo and said, you know, Lorenzo, I bet those Yankees would really love a place where they could park their boats in the back and their cars in the front. And they bought the city dump, which went from 14th Avenue South to 21st Avenue South and constructed Aquiline Shores. When they were developing Aquiline Shores, he was the salesperson. He was the charmer with the magnanimous personality that could reach out to customers. RL was the one who actually did the work of dredging canals, and doing the engineering, and that type of thing. And Lorenzo was the one who sold the lots and developed the real estate part of it. They went from rags to riches. And when they went to riches was the part where Lorenzo became involved with politics. In 1950, he was elected to the county commission because he had friends and uh, people in town who asked him to run because there was a need. There was a vacancy in the county commission. And he became a county commissioner in 1950 and served on the county commission until 1956. He was always very proud in later years of what his job had been when he was a county commissioner because those were in the days that they actually were creating the zoning and he still today has always believed that the zoning is what made Naples develop and Collier County develop so well. When a group of individuals came to him and said, look, we have a need for a state legislator, someone to represent us in the Florida House of Representatives because our representative is retiring and is not going to run again. And so we need someone to fill that position. And my dad stepped up and says, yes, I will. And um, he was elected to the Florida House of Representatives and began his, his political career in the state legislature in 1957. And he was truly a politician of the people. This was a man who cared more about the people in his community than fame or riches. What mattered was really the people in the community and in particular this school and the education of students in this school. One of the things I remember the most about my Uncle Lorenzo I always called him Unc Wen because I couldn't pronounce his name, was how he was always so interested in girls getting education. 
because when he came along, girls didn't have much. And as he grew up, he was so interested and he was very interested that his own kids and that I got a good education. Well, having been at the school for 35 years and retiring as administrator of the school on May 20th, of course, from my perspective, his most important accomplishment was the formation of this school. My father knew that there was a need for schools of that caliber, education, to train students who were not academically oriented. Students who did not want to go to college or did not have the skills to go to college academically. Students who needed and wanted a skill, a life skill, a skill to prepare them for a job, to prepare them for a life's work. It had to do again with his family and in particular his brother who wasn't especially academically inclined but was still very, very successful in the kind of things that he did. His brother uh, always had a hard time in school learning his spelling words. And um, in those days, here we go back to history again, right? In those days, every Friday was a spelling test. And um, if you didn't make 100 on your spelling test, you got a spanking. Well, my uncle used to wear three and four pairs of pants to school every Friday because he knew he was going to miss those spelling words. And Lorenzo said, you know, we live in a community even back then which emphasized all students must go to Harvard or Yale and he just didn't believe that. If they could do something with their hands, then they would take whatever books it was needed to read and learn how to do what they wanted to do with their hands. So my dad realized that there, there needed to be a school for students like my uncle. Those who could do anything with their hands that you ask them to do or build anything. Those who could take an engine and apart and put it back together, any kind of an engine. Those who could work with their hands but had difficulties with academics. He knew there should be a better way to educate kids because here he had been the, had his brother who had helped make his living but couldn't spell the spelling words. So he got a man from Dade County to help him push the, the law through the state of Florida to make the public school system accept the VOTEC system as part of the public school system. He petitioned the Florida legislature for a vocational school in Collier County. He not only got the bill signed, he also got the funding for the school. The only other requirement was the, the county school board had to agree. And uh, as a result, that year the county school board did not agree. And the school board said, no, we've never heard of such a thing. We just cannot accept this. We don't know if it would go, what it would cost us. Well, of course, he was heartbroken because he was already doing well in other counties. The next year, he got the funding again and by that time, uh, the county pushed the vocational school in with another group of schools that they were needing to build at that time into a bond issue. And the voters voted it down. So he was heartbroken again, but he did not give up. He says he saw the need. He says, it's important. We need a vocational school in Collier County. And as a result, the third time was the charm. And the school was not only created, but was built and was opened in 1974 and was named the Collier County Vocational Educational Center. We started out as Collier County Vocational Technical Center. We've been Lorenzo Walker Institute of Technology We've been Lorenzo Walker Votech as of July 1 this year. Our school, along with many other similar schools to ours in the state, became a technical college. So he would have been especially thrilled 
about that, I think, because we still have the mindset in our community that everybody goes on needs to go on to college. Well, now our graduating seniors can. He saw his dream come into fruition because it had been his dream since early childhood, basically, because his, his brother used to make all their toys for them. And seeing his dream come to fruition was, was a, a joy to him and remained one of his, what he considered his greatest accomplishment in his legislative career. From my perspective, to have seen the school grow from 200 people when I first came to almost 2,000 now is the most wonderful thing because the school has been such an impact on the community and there's not anywhere I go where someone doesn't say to me, hey, I know you from that school and let me tell you about how it changed my life. So from my perspective, this school had such long-term outreaching effects, I think even beyond what he could have imagined and still will for many years to come. His love for education and the actual joy that he got from seeing graduates of this school. He loved to come to the nurses' graduation ceremonies and I would bring him several times. And every time in the car when we got home, going on the way home he would say, you know Bones, he says, Every time I come to one of these graduations, he says, it makes my heart just bubble over. He says, because with the joy I get from seeing the graduates as they are not only finishing their education here, but are preparing themselves for a career in the rest of their life. There's a really famous story. One time he was in the hospital and the student from the hospital was from Votech school was there and actually took his blood pressure. And, he, and she had her uniform on from Lorenzo Walker, and he said to her, what do you know about the guy that that school's named after? And she goes, oh, he's just some old guy that's been dead a long time that used to live in Naples. And at that, she said, he said to her, you can shake the hand of that dead man right now. But Daddy thought that was very funny, and he often told that story. And every time he did, he would just laugh and laugh because he thought it was funny. And he was just a warm, caring, sincere person and I really feel like his spirit lives on today through our school.